Brandon. All right, guys, here we are again. Once again, we see the ATF overstepping their bounds, doing whatever they want, especially when they have the cover of the federal government and the absenteeism of the legislative branch, which is Congress, who is the one branch, by definition, the legislative branch, who's supposed to be making laws. The ATF is supposed to enforce laws that are made in relation to firearms, not legislate or not make them. Again, that's Congress's responsibility that they're ducking right now. But in this very letter, the ATF contradicts themselves left and right, left and right. You'll notice that in the first paragraph where they refer to FRTs, force reset triggers, they say that the ATF recently examined devices commonly known as force re reset triggers and has determined that some of them are firearms and machine guns. Here's the beginning of their contradiction. They're actually saying that a part, a part, is an actual firearm. Okay, it can't be because it can't fire by itself. So it is not by definition a firearm. Look up the definition of a firearm. If we're going to talk about the English language, look up the definition. They are not firearms. They are not machine guns. These guys back here are closer to being a machine gun than a freaking trigger sitting on a table that can't have, you cannot load ammunition into a trigger. You can't fire a trigger. A trigger makes a firearm fire. So you need a trigger to complete a firearm, but you cannot have a firearm with just a trigger. So that's the beginning of the contradiction. You want to see how they continue to contradict themselves in their own two-page letter. Further down, you'll see that they say ATF's examination found that some FRT devices allow a firearm to automatically expel more than one shot with a single continuous pull of the trigger. If you replace the word FRT with firearm, this is how that very sentence would read. Some firearm devices allow a firearm to automatically expel. Okay, they continue on to say and even more contradict themselves. For this reason, ATF has concluded that FRTs that function in this way are a combination of parts. So they're acknowledging that they're a combination of parts, which we all get because they are. But earlier, they just got through telling me that that combination of parts is actually a firearm. Since when is a combination of parts a firearm? Only because they want it to be. Why? Because the ATF has no jurisdiction over parts. Even though they've already got the OG in there with the silencers and the suppressors, they've had that in there from early, early on. But that shouldn't be regulated. Not, not that any gun should. Let's get that disclaimer out of the way. None, none of this should be regulated. But let's go along with the ATF's little party here. They regulate firearms. They don't regulate accessories. So now we're going to start including triggers as part of that. They've already tried to get into the market of uh, manipulating and trying to regulate uh, stocks or braces or anything else like that. They're trying to get into the stock and brace business. That's just accessories. Now, why is that dangerous? You know why that's dangerous. Everything on these firearms behind me, at some point, based on precedent and the current path that the ATF is going on, can be regulated. Let's not forget, guys, that we had the old argument. Remember the old argument that increases the rate of fire whenever they were talking about the bump stocks? Remember that? That was one of their key arguments, that the bump stock, if, it, if, if this accessory increased the rate of fire that somehow it made it a machine gun. There are so many devices on the market that technically do increase the rate of fire. If I'm going to put optics on a firearm, that aim point right there is going to allow me to get back on target much faster and increase my rate of fire. So using their own definition, I know it's ridiculous. It's just as ridiculous to call a trigger and a pile of parts a firearm. But it's just as ridiculous for us to sit here and think that they wouldn't ever say that that optic right there is now an NFA item or a GCA item because it increases my rate of fire. The same argument that they are already using and have used in the past. That's the slippery slope that we are on. They are setting their own precedent by using a twisted way of looking at the terms that they use in the way that they use them and allowing us or expecting us 
to accept them. Once we accept them, then they continue to use them and they can pile more of those exact same ridiculous things in here. Again, don't think that optics aren't going to be in there at some point. Maybe a flat face trigger allows you to, to, to keep your figure in a positive position on your target, or excuse me, on your firearm, so you're able, able to stay on target faster and get more accurate rounds in, increasing your rate of fire. Even though the mechanism of flat face trigger is no different than a curved trigger, they may determine that. Again, they're using this terminology already. This is not something that we're dreaming up. They're already in the process of utilizing that. And this letter just shows more of that preposterous nature of being able to say that they're talking about a pile of parts that goes into a firearm, but yet still referring to that same pile of parts somewhere else as a firearm, because that's what they are instructed to regulate, not accessories. So they are purposely calling the things that they want to regulate a firearm so that they can regulate them. I want to see the wording, how they somehow another twist it to say that an optic is also a firearm because it increases your rate of fire. But let's wait and see. This is going to be a good one whenever it comes out. Now, Firearms Policy Coalition has put out some really good information on this. And just a side note, Gun Owners of America also is opposing this. Kudos to them for that. But FPC put some really good points out. And I actually pulled those points along with an attorney online, Joshua Prince. Um, I've referred to some of his things, uh, princelaw.com. Actually, actually, it's blog.princelaw.com. He's got some pretty good points in here, too. Uh, both of them have mirror themselves as far as some of the related points. So I'm just going to read uh, some from uh, Mr. Prince's law firm. And it says, be aware that the agent may attempt to have you sign an ATF 3400.1 form, which is a consent to forfeiture or destruction of property and waiver of notice, which you should not sign under any circumstance. In the event that they ask you to sign an ATF 3400.1, inform them that the only ATF form you are willing to sign is an ATF 3400.2, which is a receipt of property and other items. That's really important. I don't think you should just openly consent. These agents and these guys, if you're ever approached, are going to act like you've done something wrong. Remember this. You've done nothing illegal. When you purchased that force reset trigger, it was completely legal. And if you have your receipts, even better. But you have committed no crime. Don't let them treat you like a criminal. Don't feel like a criminal. Know your rights. Simply tell them, I do not consent to this. I would recommend taking pictures and video. They actually, FPC and uh, Prince Law Firm say to take pictures of the form that you fill out and sign. I would still write on there, I do not consent to this. I would still write that on the form. Write it in your own handwriting and initial it, sign it, whatever you have to do. But still acknowledge that you are not consenting to them taking, removing, or destroying your property. Because that's what they're going to do. Now, the video is a good way to, if it, if it makes its way to court, the video is a very good way to cover yourself on this is what I said and how I said it. That way they cannot misinterpret your words. They will misinterpret your words. Do not let them do that. So by videoing that, and you have the legal right to video that, if they refuse that, tell them to leave your property because somebody's doing something wrong or you need to call your local sheriff's department or somebody else because you have the legal right to film that. I would film it from the moment they step on your property and follow all these rules by FPC. Follow them all. And do not deviate from them and don't cut that camera off until they are driving out of your property. That's your rights to do that. Protect yourself because these people are not looking out for you guys. They are certainly not looking out for you. And you know who else is not looking out for you? Congress. It's Congress's responsibility to get involved in this kind of stuff. And they're not doing it. Again, they're punting. They're getting out of it because they're scared of it. The so-called Republicans who are supposed to be Second Amendment supporters are not true Second Amendment supporters. So they don't want to get involved in this to risk whatever it is they think because they somehow or another think that just by being a Republican, that they're going to get votes for the Second Amendment. This is their way of keeping their hands clean from it and not having to get involved. The Democrats, they don't want any part of it either. They're going to go down in a bloodbath just this year alone in the midterms because Joe Biden is burning the entire country to a ground. So they certainly don't want to get involved in any kind of an anti-gun legislation out there. So they're allowing, they're putting pressure on the ATF and allowing them to do this kind of stuff with zero authority to do so. Guys, this is not right. We need to be loud about this. One more thing. 
You guys remember the comment period that we had with bump stocks and stabilizing braces? This is a letter that just got put out about stating that just now, without any kind of a comment period, that FRTs are now illegal. The ATF does not have that authority to do that. The ATF's job is to follow the rules, which includes a comment period by law. They have to provide that comment period. They're not doing it. They are claiming in this letter that these triggers are illegal. They can't do that. Even though they have a convoluted, screwed up set of rules, they're not following their own rules. They have to release this with a comment period before they can rule on anything indefinitely. Now, if the ATF wants to make the argument that a force reset trigger makes a firearm into a machine gun, then do that. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's accurate, but do that. You're sitting here saying that that pile of parts is, is a firearm by itself. We can't even argue that because it is such a stupid argument. That's like saying a pool noodle is a swimming pool. It's just an absolutely stupid argument. You cannot do the same thing with a an FRT that you can with an actual firearm. It's not possible. Nobody's robbing banks with a pile of parts in their hand saying, stick them up. This is my firearm. The ATF said it was. Let's go, Brandon.